Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to talk about a brand new topic in calculus called Newton's method. Let's talk about let's talk about the basics of this method. So when someone someone comes up to you and says, "What is Newton's method?" What do you answer? Well, Newton was a very clever man, and he figured out an interesting way using calculus, using derivatives and calculus, to find the roots of a complicated function. For example, here I have drawn before you a complicated function. Now, this is not a realistic function, that's okay. But notice, the function crosses the x-axis once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So it has what we would call five roots, five values for x, where the value for y would be zero. And so that would be a fifth-order equation, and if you've gotten any experience working with fifth-order equations in algebra, it would be very difficult if someone gave you a fifth-order equation in algebra and asked you to find the five roots. You'd be really hard, hard up to try to find out what those five roots are. Well, it was hard for Newton as well, but he came up with a very ingenious way to figure out how to find these roots. So let's say we're trying to find these roots right here, and you have no idea what they may be. You just purely take a guess. Say, well, let me pick a value for x that might be somewhere close to a root. You may have no idea that you picked the right value or not, but let's say we pick this value right here, and we're going to call that x1. Say, well, x1 is a value for x that may be somewhat nearby the value of a root. Okay, what you do then is you go ahead and find out what the function evaluated at that value is. So here we have the function f of x, right, represented by this curve, and so this point right here, if we evaluate the function at, of, at x equals x1, so we can then say uh, f when x equals to x1 will be equal to this value right there, will be equal to the height of that point, right? It's equal to the y value of this point on that uh, line. If you plug in x into the function, you get the corresponding y value right here. So that would be the corresponding y value of that function. So this is equal to y, or the height of that point, away from the x-axis, so one way to look at it. All right, if you now take the, the slope of that line, for example, if you want to know what the derivative is at that point, you say, okay, the slope at that point is equal to the derivative of that function when x is equal to x sub 1. So if we evaluate the derivative of that function at that location, we get the slope. Now, let's see what we can do with that slope. If we now draw a, a straight line, a line that has that slope on it, from that point, we end up on this point right there. And notice how much closer that point is to the actual root than our first guess point. So we should somehow mathematically be able to figure out what that point is right there. And so let's call that x sub 2 because this is actually an iterative process. We find x sub 2, then we find x sub 3, then we find x sub 4, and supposedly this method will get you closer and closer and closer to the actual root of that function. So how do we find x sub 2? Well, x sub 2 can be found by realizing that the difference between x sub 1 and x sub 2, let's call that delta x. And so you can say, therefore, that x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 minus delta x. All right, that seems to make sense. So is there now some means in which we can figure out what delta x is equal to? Well, let's see here. Let's go back to the definition of what the slope is. So the slope, by definition, is equal to the rise divided by the run. And so the rise in this case, if I look at this triangle right here, the rise of this triangle, that would be equal to the height of the function evaluated at f of x equals to x sub 1. That would be y right here. So I could say, well, the rise is equal to the function evaluated at x sub 1. That is the height of the function at x sub 1. And the run, well, the run, that would be this delta x right here, wouldn't it? So the run can be said, well, that's equal to delta x. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find out what that delta x is. So let me take that equation and solve that equation for delta x. So if I move the delta x over here and the slope down there, I can say that delta x is equal to the function evaluated at my first guess point divided by the slope of this line. Well, but wait a minute. The slope of a line, isn't it equal to the derivative of that function? And the answer is yes. So the slope of this line is equal to the derivative of the function evaluated at this value for x, x sub 1. With other words, delta x 
is equal to the function evaluated x sub 1 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated x sub 1 because that will give me the slope of the function at that particular location which means that the delta x the distance from x sub 1 to x sub 2 can be defined as the ratio of the function evaluated x divided by the derivative of the function evaluated x. So if I want to know where x sub 2 is, all I have to do is take my first guess point and subtract from that the ratio of the function evaluated at my first guess point divided by the derivative of the function evaluated x sub 1. It's kind of slick, isn't it? So we could say that x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 minus that ratio of f of x sub 1 divided by the derivative of f evaluated at x sub 1. And that will give me now my new point. So you say, well, OK, you have a point that's closer, but that's still not the root. Well, we can do it a second time. What we can now do is say, OK, I'm going to again evaluate my function. Let me use a different color here. I'm going to evaluate my function now at my new point. All right? And then if I take the derivative of that point, I will find the slope of that line. So that would be the tangent line. And notice, if I draw this right here, that will give me a third point, x sub 3, which is much, much closer to the actual root than x sub 2. So what I can say now is, if I do that again, I can now say that x sub 3 is equal to x sub 2 minus the difference between x sub 2 and x sub 3. That would be this new distance right there, that is your delta x, that is my new delta x right there. And again, just as before, that means that I can find that delta x using the very same method as I used over there. That means that x sub 3 is equal to x sub 2 minus the ratio of the function evaluated at x sub 2 divided by the function the derivative of the function evaluated at x sub 2. I now find the third point, x sub 3, which again should be closer to the root than x sub 2. What I can do then is, is how big is this value of delta x? As long as that delta x is significant in size, I will just keep doing the process. I can say, OK, I then take that point, go up here, evaluate my function at x sub 3, evaluate the derivative function at x sub 3, I'll get a new position right here, which is much closer to the root as before, and I can just keep on going. So I go x sub 4, therefore is equal to x sub 3, minus the function evaluated at x sub 3, divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at x sub 3. Again, this represents the distance from the previous point to the known point x sub 4. And I look at that ratio and I see how big that number is. And if that number is still significant in size, whatever significant means to the person who's using it, say, so, OK, let's do it a fifth time. So x sub 5 is equal to x sub 4 minus the function evaluated x sub 4 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated x sub 4. And you just keep on going until this ratio becomes so small that it becomes insignificant. And you say, well, I have found my root, found your first root. And then you can do it again for your second root, third root, and so forth. But at least it gives you a means of finding at least the first root of your function, even if it has many roots and it's otherwise very difficult to find the roots of a function that has a very high, high order like that. So that's how we go ahead and use what we call Newton's method to find the root of a very complicated algebraic function that has multiple roots that otherwise would be very difficult to find. I think it's very ingenious and it took somebody as smart as Newton to figure out this method.